All right, guys, so part two of my JavaScript shorts videos. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about named and anonymous functions. So firstly, we'll look at the name functions. So looking here, I've got functions defined in different ways. The old JavaScript way, we use the function keyword and give it a name, brackets, and curly brackets. So that is a standard old JavaScript function. We've got the ES6 way of doing things where we define a constant name and assign this arrow function to it. That's effectively doing the same thing as that, just using the new ES6 syntax. Um, and we can use that by calling it directly by, for example, test function. Just call it with the brackets and that will call test function uh, or test function two would call test function two or we can use it is callbacks. For example, here we've got this uh, out event listener on load. So when the document loads, we're going to call our test function. Um, and you don't use your brackets because you want to pass a reference. Uh, if you put the brackets there, it'll actually try and run that function, not use it as a reference for the callback. Um, so basically it's the name there. Um, we might use a timeout method where after one second, so a thousand milliseconds, we want to call test function two. Uh, so we use the, again, the name as a reference. So these are what are known as named functions. Anonymous functions. The first example of that is the previous episode I talked about closures and inside the closure the first thing you have is a function. So I've used that ESX function here but it has no name which is why we call it an anonymous function. So it's just the function itself without any name assigned. it. So I could also do that as function. That's the old JavaScript way, um, or ES6, and that's the new ES6 way. Same, same deal. Both of those are an anonymous function. Okay, the other place we might use it is, is a callback. So in a timeout, for example, after one, one, one second, we want to call a function to do something. We just create the function as the callback. So instead of uh, passing in a function name like here, we pass in the function itself as the callback, but it doesn't have a name. So that's why it's called an anonymous function. Uh, and just rewriting our event listener here for load, um, we can add that to the document load and just put our ESX function there. Now, when does it make sense to use anonymous functions uh, in uh, closures? Um, you need an anonymous function to uh, to make the uh, closure complete. Um, as a uh, callback, it's your choice whether you use a name function or a anonymous function. Uh, so typically, if the callback is going to be quite a large amount of code, or it's going to be an initializer, which then initializes other code and calls other things, um, you might use a named function there. Um, you don't have to, like for example, in here, you might call at a, another function called init. Um, and then, oops. And then you might call another function in here called uh, do something. These don't exist yet, but you can actually do function calls from within this anonymous, fu anonymous function. Uh, or if you've got a function called init, which does all your initialize, just put init there, and that will call a name function to do the same thing. So, so that's where you use it in a uh, callback. Um, so in my view, if it's a small amount of code or it's something that's only relevant to that callback, so uh, we might look at, say, when our window loads, um, we just want to populate some variables or we want to hide something or show something, uh, we could simply put that code in an anonymous function here. Um, if we want it to be a function that has a lot of code, or if we want to refer to it from multiple places. So on document load, we might want to do something. Uh, we might also have another element here, which has got a uh, add event lesson, a click, whatever this element might be, obviously the document moment. So in that, if we've got a init function, 
uh, or a let's say it's going to make a sound. That's uh, I'm not sure why you do that, but let's say uh, play beep, play beep on our uh, document load. Uh, we also want to play beep when the document is clicked. We have a play beep um, there. And because we're adding this function to multiple callbacks, as multiple callbacks, uh, it makes sense to have as a name function where you might put there, say, constant play beep equals, and then here is your code to play the beep. All right, so name functions, if they're going to be called from multiple locations or multiple events, make more sense. Anonymous functions make more sense if you're just going to use it in that one instance. Um, it's just cleaner, easier, um, but that's pretty much the difference between them. So named, obviously, have a name. Uh, anonymous, don't have a name. Um, and they both have their uses. If there's anything else you'd like me to cover, please put it in the comments. If you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.